uh tag and invite people this is gonna be a good one tonight y'all so as you can already see i have a special 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 guest and and uh it's gonna be very exciting and so i want you to go ahead and share this i want you to go ahead and uh tag and invite uh listen everyone if you have not or you haven't followed the um Church of Believing God's Facebook page, I, I admonish you to uh, go and uh, like and follow and do me a big favor. I want you to go out, like this broadcast, come back in, and I want you to get to sharing this broadcast. Uh, it's going to be really, really good, y'all. I'm telling you. So go ahead and begin to share. Uh, I'm super excited tonight. I have my, I have my apostle. I have my, I have my apostle, apostle. I have my daughter in the ministry, a doctor, Deanna Morris. She's with us tonight. And so uh, do me a big favor. I see some of you are already doing it. I want you to go ahead and share. I want you to go ahead and tag, 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 tag. And uh, if you want to really want to dive into some things tonight when it deals with the areas of mental health, you want to deal with trauma, you want to deal with um, you want to deal with dysfunction. You want to deal with how to address some things mentally, emotionally, psychologically. I need you to go ahead and tune in. I need you to tag somebody because we're really going to have a real conversation tonight. So we're going to give it a few minutes, everybody. Thank you so much for both of you who are already tagging and sharing. Uh, thank you so much. As I see your names uh, going across the screen, I'm going to call you out. I'm going to say, hey, hey, hey. Sister Caldwell, mother, it's so good to see you on here. Chairman, it's so good to see you on here. Pastor Serenity, I see you. I see you. So good to see you on here. Uh, I think it was Sabrina. Sabrina. So I think I'm saying that right. Sabrina. God bless okay. you. So, Sabrina. Okay. So good to see you on here tonight. Uh, Denise Prophet Cooper. I see you on here this afternoon. Joyce Lynn. Oh, your, your people, your people running. <laughs> yeah, I see all of you. <laughs> They're running on here tonight. It's so good to see everybody on here. Uh, do me a big favor, everyone. Pastor Lee, daughter, so good to see you on here. Uh, all of you, as you are tuning in, as you are coming on, do me a big favor. And I need you to go ahead and share. And I need you to go ahead and invite uh, by tagging. Hey, if you're excited about tonight's Bible study, I want you to go ahead and release those emojis right now. Go ahead and start hitting those emojis, whatever emoji, your favorite emoji. I want you to go ahead and release those emojis right now. And uh, and we are excited about this Bible study. I'm so excited to have Dr. Dr. D on here this afternoon. I, I'm super excited. Okay, she don't want me, she want me to stop. I can tell. I see <laughs> she wants me to stop. She wants me to stop. I am excited though, everybody. Uh, if you've been following us, we have been talking about growing in our healing. And uh, we have been having some exciting conversations and some in-depth conversations. Uh, and we tailed off yesterday, uh, last week talking about offense. And uh, something really tugged on me. God really tugged on me in regards to the subject matter that we've been talking about. Because I believe it was his hand. It is his hand alone that has been really navigating us through this conversation. And so I felt like tonight God really wanted to really open this conversation up. And so that is why y'all see Dr. Deanna on here, and uh, she's going to partner with me tonight to really open up this conversation. Um, and then also what we're going to do is, is that uh, we're going to let some people jump on. And look, in the comment section, if you have any questions, we're going to be trying to monitor the, 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 the comment section tonight. If you have any questions while we're talking and discussing about our subject matter tonight, at any time, you can definitely leave those questions we'll jump right on those questions as we're going through this hour this broadcast the hour of this broadcast so do us a favor everybody we see the numbers are going up we're very excited about that uh because of the subject matter we definitely want to grow the audience and so do us a favor go ahead and continue to share uh continue to go ahead and tag somebody if you know somebody who has dealt with trauma whether it's in home whether it's been in a childhood whether it's church church hurt um, you know, just any level of trauma that you may have 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 had an encounter with, and you are at a place to where you're 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 just saying enough is enough. We want to have a conversation with you, and mm -hmm. uh, we want to talk about these things because we're believing God tonight. Some generational curses are going to be broken, and uh, and you're going to see you're going to see better days ahead of you. And so, if you're excited about that, go ahead and continue to share. 
uh, continue to invite by tagging. Oh, okay. I see Erica. I see some of my some of my younger people. I'm so glad y'all on here. Erica, so good to see you on here. Jamie, it's so good to see you on here tonight. I love you so much. Um, so listen, everybody, we're giving like another minute and then we're going to go ahead and get started. But do us a big favor. Continue to share this. Continue to invite by tagging someone, tagging a group of people. I'm telling you, this subject is going to be amazing. It's going to be definitely mm -hmm. amazing tonight, everyone. And so, again, go ahead and share, 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 uh, share, 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 and share, and tag them and tell them this. This is gonna. This is this is for you tonight. I want you to tag somebody and invite them to Bible study. And say this is for you tonight. We believe me and Doctor Deanna believe that you know what chains are gonna be broken, clarity yes. gonna be coming forth. Uh, you know, we talked earlier today, and we even the conversation really started blessing us, and so. We just really believe through this conversation, we believe breakthroughs are going to take place. And uh, we want to be here to help uh, monitor. Uh, we want to be able to uh, navigate. We want to be able to help so many people tonight in this area that we're getting ready to discuss. All right, everybody. Well, listen up. It is now 17. We're getting ready to get started. Uh, we want to welcome everybody to the Church of the Living God's Midweek Online Bible Study. My name is Apostle Thomas. This is Dr. Deanna the founder and leader of TMRVA, Richmond, Virginia. And uh, we are very excited for being with us tonight. Uh, and uh, to all you, everyone who is tuning in tonight, thank you so much. And we are excited about what God is doing. We have been in a, uh, what I really believe is a really thought-provoking series called Growing in Our Healing. And uh, if you've been following us, uh, and many of you, if you've really been blessed by the series during this month of January, and you've been following me and this teaching, I want you to release those emojis right now. And uh, I want you to go into the comment section and say, I am growing. For those of you who have been following, those of you who have been kind of tracking, I want you to go into the comment section and say, I am growing. Uh, if you've been growing, I want you to say, I am growing. And come on and release those emojis uh, if you have. You have. Amen. 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 I'm I'm thankful to God for so many of you who have been really been growing through this series. But tonight, everybody, what we're going to be talking about and what we're going to be dealing with, we're going to be talking about trauma. We're going to be talking about trauma tonight. And um, we understand the subject matter is going to be very sensitive. So we are we have been praying. We have been really asking God to give us the words so that we can be able to share and we will be able to encourage tonight. But we're going to be talking about trauma. And uh, and we really feel like this is a conversation we feel like that is uh, very necessary and is very vital uh, to to the growth of an individual. And more even even so, if you go even a step further, Dr. Deanna, I think not only individually, but I think when you begin to deal with trauma and you begin to navigate trauma, you, you want to grow, not just grow, you wanna grow from it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 and it makes a difference in your individual growth, but in the growth of the people around you, because a lot of times we don't realize that our trauma or our, uh, our exchange or our reaction to our trauma affects everybody around us. And that's not just our immediate family, but that's even in the workplace, whatever you have experienced, it alters who, who you are, which makes you respond a certain way and it affects everybody around you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and 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 not even and what we're gonna talk about tonight, everybody, is that sometimes unknowingly, when you really have never addressed the things that have happened in your life, and you allow those things to grow with you, we don't realize the impact of those things, and we don't realize, and we will begin to mask, and we'll begin to, uh, you know, begin to 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 imagine and project. Yeah. Uh, that the issues that that other people have with you is not really your issues, <laughs> and, uh, and and we're not trying to make light of this, but a lot of times, a lot of the reasons why oftentimes we do not find healthy relationships, the reason why we don't seem to be able to interact with people in a very healthy way, uh, the reason why many of us, even in the church, we have trust issues is because yes. there is something that has been wounded in me that has never been addressed and because it's never been addressed that means i have been living my life with open wounds mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, we want to address it. We want to talk about that. If you're excited about this tonight, we want you to go ahead and uh, release those emojis right now. And we're getting ready to share our screen and we're getting ready to get started. But if you're excited about this subject matter, you're excited about this conversation, we want you to release those emojis right now as we get ready to move into our subject matter. And another thing while we're going forward tonight, listen to me, you guys. This conversation will trigger you. It's okay to be triggered with what you hear. And it causes sometimes will cause memories to come up, things to come up. That is okay. Don't um, run away from those feelings. Don't run away from those situations because that is how you heal. When you put it in the back of your mind and don't think about it, you don't heal. It's just out of sight, out of mind. But tonight, don't feel any kind of way. If something comes up, if you need to reach out or any of that stuff, that's what we're here for. We're not going to open you up and leave you bleeding and leave you hanging. So don't feel any kind of way if something comes up that you hadn't thought about in years. It's okay. That's why we're doing it so that we can deal with the trauma. So be be prepared for that. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's why we we put a precursor into this, everyone, that, you know, if you do have any questions, we're going to do everything we can to really be watching in the comments tonight. If you have a question that we want to take out the time, even if it's even if it's just even if it's a sensitive matter, you can even message us and we and we will take it offline. But we want to make sure that, you know, tonight we want to be able to help people really begin to open up and really begin to get the type of healing they really be needing or really been desired because, so many of us cannot really find true happiness because we are not really addressing the elephant in the room. And I've been That's using right. that a lot. You know, I've been using that a lot, uh, Deanna, uh, Apostle Deanna, because a lot of times the analogy of the elephant in the room is that uh, we walk around and we interact with people and we and we try to ignore, not ignore, but we try to ignore what is mm-hmm. going on in a space and with people. And so a lot of times we grow and we we get older but we haven't really grown from the from incidences and that's it incidents yeah. and that's, yeah, that's the, what they it's, are yeah, mm-hmm. yeah the it's the incidents. Incidents, yeah it's the incident that happens mm-hmm. and it leaves us stuck in a place and sometimes we just live life with an incident that happened when we were four years old and here we are forty four years old yeah. and forty years has passed of uh unproductive behavior, uh, fear, all kinds of things. And everything and everybody around us has adjusted to our trauma. Everybody has, I want y'all, I want y'all to really catch that. Everybody has adjusted to our trauma. Mm-hmm. So anytime something has happened in our lives and has gone unaddressed, now, now what people do is when we do not confront it, we have enablers, right? That mm-hmm. down. That many of you right now may be dealing with some trauma issues. And the reason why you have not really broken free is not because you don't want to. You may just have people who are now enablers and they're not realizing that they are really hindering you more than they are helping you. Exactly. That's it. That's it. So tonight, everybody, we're going to be dealing with when trauma comes to your doorstep. And so... Trigger alert. Listen, trigger alert, everybody. We've been kind of warning you, but trigger alert. We want to really preference this and we want to make sure that you know uh, that you are really prepared tonight because we are really going to be diving into some areas. And again, everyone, we want you to know that, hey, if it gets a little tight, we want you to breathe. We want you to uh, exhale because this is really about deliverance. And this is mm-hmm. really about you taking control and taking power back for your life. So trigger alert, everybody. We're going to be dealing with some sensitive subject matter tonight, but it's going to really help some people. And we really believe God is going to really help some people. So number one, we're going to be dealing with a look at the life of one traumatized. Yes. We're going to be looking at a looking at the life of one traumatized because in order for you to begin to have an understanding of what trauma is, we have to be able to dissect it. We have to be able to di- didactically take an approach towards a, a model of what trauma. We cannot avoid the trauma. We cannot overlook the trauma. We must look it in the faith and say, I know who you are. Mm-hmm. I know who you are. Number two, we're going to be dealing with, we're going to talk about, it started with one. And so when when we talk about trauma and we talk about uh, the, the traumatization of is that a word? Traumatization of of mm-hmm. of, of family. And we 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 are we're talking about the traumatization of tr- of what happens in church. 
How many of you know that when one is traumatized, then 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 trauma can begin to impact people around you. And so communities are affected. The church can be affected that you belong to. Your family could be affected. But guess what? It all started with someone. Someone. It all started with someone. And so we want to begin to even begin to deep dive into that. As we begin to understand trauma, we have to also understand its origins. Many of us are the victim or the results of generational generational trauma. I almost said generational curses, but and you can almost look at it like a curse as well, but we're going to call it generational trauma. That most, a lot of us who are traumatized, much of our traumatization have come from much of our childhood, and if we really be honest, we will find its origins within our own bloodline. Uh, whether That's you met good. the person, yeah, or met the person, or you never met the person, but somewhere deep in your bloodline, somewhere, uh, somebody had been traumatized and they did not know how to deal with it. So they, and so what they did was, is that rather than deal with it, they taught you about it. Mm -hmm. They taught, they taught your, they taught, they taught your parents about it. They taught mm -hmm. your grandparents about it, and now we're dealing with we're dealing with an Am we're dealing with a, a, a the Amalekite who should should have been dead when they were small, but now they have all grown up. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And they all look and they all look alike. The generations look alike. You have mm -hmm. one that might have expanded a little bit uh, from the generation before, but if you really dig dig into the patterns, the patterns look the same because of the very first incident that happened that caused um, caused the trauma. And, and it's, it's so unfortunate that um, it's so hard to break that pattern um, because when you've been in a pattern for so long, for generations, when you step outside of the pattern, there's something wrong with you. Wow. It's not the pattern. Most times they think it's not the pattern that's broken. It's the person that broke the pattern that makes them feel like it's something wrong with them because they did something better. They did something different. Mm -hmm. And that's just a mindset. That is just a generational mindset. And, you know, it reminds me of when Jesus tells Jesus tells um, Nicodemus it, when when Nicodemus is kind of stuck in a place or kind of like in this 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 cycle that he is in of his thinking, he said, "You're gonna have to be born again." Like, and so in other words, what I'm telling you, these are the words of life. But in order for you to be able to come up out of what you are in right now, you're gonna have to receive what I am saying, but you're gonna have to do something about it. And that's something that I think is so important that when when God is speaking to you in a particular season, when you are crying out to God, says, "I'm tired of living like this. I'm I'm tired of facing my having nightmares. I'm I'm tired of of of, of waking up with sweats in the night, or I'm tired of having anxiety that that almost just overwhelms me because of the open wound." God will speak a word. I feel God here. I God God will yes. speak a word. That 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 can that can set you free, but just like Nicodemus, you have to receive that word, and then you're gonna have to apply that word if you're gonna see change. And that's and, so and important, me, everybody. Is that me, you me, gotta receive it? I'm so excited. Let me dive into that because I didn't see that coming. But get this: even if you go back prior to him coming to G um in, in the conversation. There was a you could already tell that he wasn't ready for change because mm. he came in secret. Oh, yeah, you know, you know what I'm Come saying? On. He Come came on. in secret at night when nobody could see, when nobody could question his behavior. Mm -hmm. Because I want some answers, but I don't want anybody to think that I'm different or that I'm changing or something is happening. And that's what a lot of us do when we have trauma. Yes. We do it in secret because the, the core foundation of it is fear. Come on. Fear of doing something different, fear of being different, fear of being judged. Even when we have traumatic situations that we don't address, we don't talk about it within our families or we don't even talk about it ourselves. We just don't touch it. That's because of fear. We're fear of what the response is going to be, fear of the emotion. Do you know that people will, within themselves, in a private room, will not speak out of their mouth what has happened to them because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And, 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 and it legitimately happened, but they don't want to hear that it happened. So they can't even speak it out of their own mouth about something they already know that happened. That's what trauma does. Because and before 
before yeah. Nicodemus even got to Jesus saying, what must I do? What, how, how, you know, what is all of this? He came in with a mindset of, I don't want nobody to see me. I cannot break the pattern. So let me that, that's the part I was about to say. That's the part I was about to say was that trauma would make you uh, elect to try to be invisible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and make you and make you diminish yourself so that you don't have to face yourself. Write this down. Mm -hmm. Trauma will make you diminish yourself in, to avoid facing yourself. Yes. All right. So, so, and so, so we're going to be dealing with the, the looking at uh, the life of one traumatized. We're going to be talking about, it started with one, the origins of a thing. And then finally, we're going to be talking about restoration because you can't get to restoration until you first deal and address the, 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 the issue. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so listen, so everyone who is watching this right now, uh, while we're talking, I want you to write this down or you can screenshot it, but this is called defining moments matter. All right. You say it with me, defining moments matter. And, and anytime that when God begins to give, um, a, a, a liberating word, I always believe that God, Deanna, he, what he does is, is that he creates a model. Jesus was a model in the earth so that we will have to be able to give us a new pattern and a new paradigm that will help us begin to understand. We don't have to stay in the place that we are in. And and and, and, and yeah. yeah, we, we whew, this is gonna be interesting. Go ahead. So so in order for us to build a model, we have to have a language for that model. And so I believe that everything that God does for a season, if He builds models, He gives a language. Mm -hmm. Many of you who follow us, y'all y'all know that this is a part of our DNA. That any time that God does anything, we always talk about God builds models for the future. But in order for Him to build a model, He has to also give you a language. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right. So defining moments do matter. And so tonight, what we're gonna do is is that we're gonna give you a couple of defining moments that is you're gonna hear a lot of through this presentation. So number one, we're gonna deal with trauma. What is trauma? Is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. All right. Mm -hmm. I really want y'all to breathe that in. For many of you who are quietly, you know, secretly, some of us are dealing with it publicly, but I want you mm -hmm. to understand why you have anxiety attacks. I want you to understand why that you all of a sudden will break into hives or you'll begin to, or you'll begin to, you, you know, you, 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 every time you see certain things or certain people, something begins to happen. You have no control over it because what trauma is, it's a deeply distressing and disturbing experience. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. And then what I want you to do is, is that number two, I want you to deal with, I want, we're going to deal with, you're going to hear a lot about is abandon. Yes. Abandon. Because what many of you have experienced through trauma you now feeling the backlash or you're feeling the ramifications. That's the word I'm looking for, the ramifications of being abandoned. And so what abandoned is, is they cease to support or look after. It cease to support. So when something has happened to you intentionally to, to uh, that, that has wounded you, the, the, whatever support that you may have had in partnership with what, who has done something to you, that support has ceased. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The trust that you may have had in someone that may have took advantage of you, once the event has happened, they may have looked after you. But once it has happened, they no longer look after you because they have abandoned you. And, and one thing about abandonment, what people don't realize, abandonment can be voluntary or involuntary. You can experience abandonment because somebody passed away. Mm -hmm. And that's not voluntary. They didn't voluntarily uh, abandon you. Life circumstances happened and they passed away. Or something happened that took them out of your life. And it wasn't voluntarily. That's like a parent, uh, two parents, and one parent get a divorce and the one parent decides you're never going to see the kids again. And you deal with abandonment under a precept that my father wasn't there but it wasn't because they did not want to be there. It was the circumstances surrounding it. So sometimes abandonment that we experience has nothing to do with somebody voluntarily abandoning you. It could be involuntary based on the actions of somebody else or some other circumstance. Amen. 
Amen. And 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 I think the part that we often don't deal with, uh, De uh, Apostle Deanna, is we always talk about the intent or the in or the or the intentional acts that may have happened to an individual or to a collective of people, but we often don't talk about the 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 things that are that that may have happened that might have been indirectly. It yes. could have been indirectly that caused a chain of events that mm -hmm. that that when who is the so who is the culprit like who is the person i can point the finger to and that is a trauma all in its own when when yes. when the people when they ask you who did it to you it's like I, there's no one to point to and, and you you have nobody to point that's like if somebody passing away yep. who, who you blame nobody, nobody. especially if it's yeah. like the natural causes you don't and, and that's a layer of abandonment that you always have questions until you mm -hmm. deal with the trauma of how this abandonment made you feel. And a lot of times we don't deal with what we feel so we can't address the trauma. We just get up and say, I'm fine. How many people, how you doing? I'm fine. You know, good and well, you're not fine. Not by a long shot. Blessed, and, and let me get this for the church. I'm blessed and highly favored. Well, you wasn't like that when you left home. You just said that because I'm standing here. Because we are two people in two different places. So mm -hmm. so I am one person when I'm at church or I'm out and about in the public. And when people encounter with me, I've already trained myself. Because trauma will train you. I want y'all to write yes. this down. Trauma will train you how to respond to keep people away from you. And so mm -hmm. trauma trains you. And so when you are out in public and people say, Hey, it's been a long time. I ain't seen you in a while. How you been? Oh, I've been so good. I mean, everything is going well. And you know that not even 20 minutes ago, you were literally, literally trying to catch your breath because anxiety had you so, so, so wrapped up that you, mm -hmm. you lost all control of your faculties and you had to let it wash over you so you can get back control. But mm -hmm. that's how I am in one place. But when I walk outside, trauma says, well, we can't let nobody see us. That's it right there. Trauma says we cannot let nobody see us. And so we put on a mask. And what we do is that we we, we have many masks for many seasons or for, for different people. And so when you're dealing with that such a trauma, there is another word I want to give tonight. And that's called abandonment trauma. Abandonment trauma is a fear-based response to being abandoned. So we're mm -hmm. talking about trauma, we're talking about abandonment, but there's a thing called abandonment trauma. And so, so here's some of the characteristics of abandonment trauma. Fear of being left behind. Mm -hmm. Fear of being left behind. Listen, this is Church of Living God's midweek Bible study. Uh, this is Apostle Thomas, Dr. Deanna. How many of you, look, we, we're tonight, we haven't got into introductions yet. How many of you are already catching, receiving, you're being blessed by this? Release those emojis so we know that, you know, you're with us tonight. We're talking about when trauma comes to your doorstep. And we, we just want to make sure that we ain't lost anybody. Are y'all with us tonight? Yeah, they definitely with us. They with us. <laughs> yeah, they definitely with us tonight. Okay, so listen, everybody. So when you feel abandoned, what abandonment trauma states is, is that there are characteristics and attributes that are now born that that unaddressed, they, they begin to move and they begin to dictate our lives. They literally make decisions and they can counterproductive to your walk, your destination, your momentum. And so, number one, one of the first things is called fear of being left behind, because what trauma does is, is when it happens, trauma wants you to keep you in that event. If it's 1988, mm -hmm. but it's 2024, you are still in 1988, according to trauma. Mm-hmm. 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 That is so true. I, I have some, um, had a client who every question that I would ask him about uh, something that happened, I mean, it could be random stuff. And I would say, well, how old were you? Eight years old. Mm-hmm. Eight years old. Eight years old. And uh, I had the opportunity to talk to one of the one of his family members and the family member began to share with me like timeline because I would always think there's no way he could have been eight years old when that happened. Mm -hmm. But it's because the first incident, listen to what I'm saying, the first incident happened at eight years old. So as they got older and they thought about their childhood, everything that happened, I was eight years old. Wow. 
Everything so, was eight years old. Eight years old. So everything that had happened from from the from the age of eight. It has the ability to make you respond to things as an eight year old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How you interact with people, you're going to interact with people according to that trauma as an eight year old. You might not think about it because you think you're an adult. You think that you're of age. You think you're handling the things, but but that's what trauma does. Trauma has you so wrapped up in the incident itself that you don't even realize. That 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 this is the problem. Why my relationships don't work? But what trauma would say is, this is only because that you know what they like everybody else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They they just like everybody else, and the only people that you are going to be able to be around is the one that enable you. That's, that's why. It. That's I why do. a lot of traumatized people. That's why a lot of times you find them around only their family, and they don't have no friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because nine times out of ten, data says that. Family are nine out of the ten the enablers. And and, and and to add to that, um, when you're stuck in trauma and you're surrounded by family that is enabling, when you begin to break the pattern, it gives them I, I used to think about this all the time. It gives them, it makes them feel lost. Because if I spent most of my time, if you were eight when you were traumatized and I've been with you all these years and at 44, you decide to make a change. I'm a living witness that this happened because I was like this, mm -hmm. uh, dealing mm -hmm. with depression for a lot of years. So when the change happened at 44 and they used to you responding this way for so many years and then you start making changes, they start questioning, are you OK? Are you OK? And and, and I, I can speak for myself. I remember I said to my friends one time, I said, why do y'all keep asking me, my friends, are saying, why do y'all keep asking me that? I'm fine. They said, because this is what we do. We know you go through this every three months mm -hmm. and you have a whole meltdown and we make the adjustments until you get over it. Nobody stopped to say something is wrong with you. You need some help. <laughs> they just made the adjustment for that little time frame. And when I bounced out of it, they bounced out of it. Wow. I, I, I'm really hoping that this is really blessing y'all tonight because this thing is real. Listen to me, everyone. Trauma is real. And one of the things that, that myself, Dr. Deanna, and I think, and I believe so many, but it, because this is the, you know, we're talking to the body. I know a lot of you are, are representation of the body of Christ. There are so many believers in, in the professions of, the, of, of psychology, therapists, uh, just dealing with trauma as a whole, we have been praying and believing God that we begin to stop treating trauma like a leopard or like yes. a dirty secret. I think it's a better one, like a dirty secret, because you're never going to be able to overcome anything as long as you are ashamed. That's it. That's it. So we want to deal with this tonight. We want to talk about this tonight. And so, you know, we talk about the fear of being left behind. Then there's the thing of low self-esteem because what the thing that has happened to me has taken something from me. It, it, and I can't find it. I can't seem to find it. And so I feel like I have no identity. And so I, I, I struggle. Many of us struggle with low self-esteem. And mm -hmm. ultimately, if it, does, if, it doesn't, if it goes unaddressed, many of us will fight today, tomorrow, on a day-to-day -day basis, depression. Mm-hmm. Depression. But well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to say, I'm, I want you to go to the comment section. Before I go to the next slide, I want you to go to the comment section and say, but I'm going to grow in my healing. I'm going to grow in my healing. Come on, <laughs> I want you to go to the comment section and say, I, I'm going to wait to see. I'm going I'm to see if there's some brave believers tonight. I know already it's heavy and we just been giving you introduction, but I, I want I want to hear from you tonight before we go any further. I want to hear from some brave believers tonight who says, I am growing in my healing because you don't have to be, you don't have to live through this alone. You don't have to go through this by yourself. You don't have to uh, uh, create, you know, um, clauses and compartments in your heart to hide these things and try to operate functional and a dysfunctional functional dysfunctional individual you don't have to do none mm -hmm. of those things but you could be free tonight you can you can be free tonight you can be delivered tonight don't nobody even have to lay no hands on you all you got to do is hear yes. the word of the lord 
No, nobody have to knock you down, throw you down, body slam you. Sometimes all you need to hear a word from the Lord that says that you can be free. That's right. That's right. Absolutely right. And, and not only that, it's that place sometimes of shame and pride that stops us from being whole and stops us from being healed. And there are so many uh, occurrences in the Bible where people are set free because they know they need to be free. Yeah. And but but for so long, you know, over the course of years, and I'm talking about from generation to generation, mm -hmm. we have lived in this. What goes on here stays here, and 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 this is our church. And don't tell nobody what's going on in the church, and don't tell nobody what's going on in the family. Don't tell nobody what's going on in the marriage, and all of those things. And we are living in trauma, and 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 and, and you will see it when people sit in churches for forty years unhappy and then they leave and people say but you've been there all that time mm -hmm. or stay in marriages for years unhappy domestic violence all kinds of stuff but y'all been it don't even look because pride and shame won't let us tell the truth and and you know and then a lot of times because of toxicity in these in these in certain environments that we all are familiar yep. with a lot of times mm -hmm. uh and what we'll talk about, we'll talk about it tonight, but we, we might as well talk about it, that when people can f realize that there is a power, there is a power in trauma, in, in, in traumatization, then they will begin to manipulate the situation. And so you will find leaders in the pulpit, you will find, you will find uh, authoritarians in your family. When they begin to pick up that trauma is a, is a tool, it's a weapon, then what they yeah. will do is that they'll begin to condition you. They'll begin mm -hmm. to condition you. And and you know what? We might as well just go all the way out here. They'll yeah, in yeah. some cases, they'll groom you. They'll groom you in your trauma. And 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 we are out here now. So <laughs> yeah, we out here now. So yeah. We are out here. I didn't, we didn't kind of know what direction this was gonna go. And I'm gonna give an example of something. And this this usually happens with the females in the family. There is always use, especially in a, in the black community. Uh, when Big Mama passes away, or uh, whatever, what else? We, what else we call a Big Mama, Grandma, Mimi, whatever, Grandma, Mimi, and all that. When they when they pass away, or they're getting ready to pass away, or they're getting older, there's always one young lady in the family that they designate to tell all the family secrets to. Come on, y'all, listen. I know you out there. They tell I mean, everything about everything. That's everything. That's everything to keep that cycle going so that people don't get out the pocket. You know, un such and such did this. And now you are a young lady or a young mother who is trying to raise her family, but you holding on to the family secrets. Mm -hmm. That's trauma in itself because you didn't even know that stuff about your favorite aunt. And now you got to pass it down when you get older, you pass it down to, and, and I know that it happens in our families. We share those things instead of uh, dealing with them and letting them die so that we can go in another direction so that we can heal. It's like we just pass it down generation to generation to keep the cycle alive. Well, you know, she can't treat you no different because she did this. That is something that happens in our families. And that is traumatizing. And you have, and, and, and as young yeah. women, you hold those secrets. I don't know about for men, but I know for women it happened. You hold that stuff and you trying to protect the rest of the family and do this and do that. And it, and, and what happens is you're carrying a load and a burden. Don't know why you're dealing with depression. Don't know why you gossip so much. Don't know why you talk so much. Mm -hmm. Because it's down the line, the same trauma that your grandmother had that she gave to your mama that now you got as a granddaughter. And that's and that's what that looks like. That's what that trauma looks like. And we don't even identify that as trauma. You know what we call that? We call that family history. That ain't no history. Why all the stuff got to be bad? It, how it can? How is the family history when when it, 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 the family history makes you or push you in depression? Or yes. it, it makes you run to alcohol, or it makes you run into drugs. It makes you fall into addictions, be simply because of the weight and the burden of the family secrets. 
But That's in the reality, it. what it is is nothing more than trauma. But here's the thing as we get ready to move forward, everyone, is that just because it was passed down don't mean they have to end up with you. That's good. Just because it was passed down to you don't mean they have to end with you. This is the place tonight where we begin to share with you that you can break the cycle. And breaking the cycle is not a deep simulated formula. It's not like deep science. Breaking the cycle means that what has experienced and what has happened in our, in my family or what has happened in uh, in uh, in relationships does not have to happen with me. Right, right. I always, right. I always say this, Dr. Deanna. I always say this, daughter. I always tell people, I say that maybe God, the reason why when you get mad and you get upset, you say, well, why did my grandmama didn't do anything about it? Why did the pastor do anything about it? Why did the deacons, why, or, or why they didn't do it in our community? Why did they allow these things to happen? Maybe because God said that I ordained you to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe God anointed you for such a time as this. Maybe you are the Esther. Mm -hmm. and maybe you're the one who goes to the king. It doesn't matter what season that you are in. You are the one who has the ability to go into the presence of a king, go into the and, presence of the Lord. And you know what? We think that yeah. it takes somebody in the family big to be a trailblazer. You're a trailblazer if you break the cycle of poverty. Come on. You're a trailbla trailblazer if your family is that family that was always needy. And I'm just using this for an example. You lived in a housing project. You broke it. You moved across the street. That's a trailblazer. We're looking for trailblazers to be these people that start these gigantic businesses and da da da. But yeah. when it comes down to trauma in our families and generational cycles and all of this stuff, it could be something so small that breaks the cycle that that deals with the trauma and it will be you. It will be you. It'll be you that that stops shopping at the uh I'm about to laugh at this. At the little Chinese grocery store in the in the neighborhood. You went to Kroger. That's so that's small, but if you're from a small town, your grandma shopped at the little grocery store with the Chinese people and, 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 and you paid higher than you supposed to pay for everything. And then the mama did it and the auntie did it and the cousins did it. And then you come along and say, I'm going to Kroger. I'm going to pay less at Kroger. I don't have a loyalty over here where they charging me more than what I'm supposed to pay. But that is so, it's so simple. But do you know that we do that out of trauma? Because in poverty, we could not, we could only uh, go to the store and get a credit. Listen to what I'm saying. You kept shopping there because you could get a credit, but now you don't even need the credit, but you're doing it out of a cycle behavior. Out of a cycle behavior. So listen, everyone, listen, I mean, I, I hope you're being blessed so far. I hope this is good. I want you to look. The, the reason why you are hearing this tonight, because God is speaking to you. And so if, if you are receiving this tonight, I want you to go into the comment section and say, I am a trailblazer. I am a trailblazer. Maybe God is calling you tonight and he's getting your attention to let you know that, you know what, you're going to be the one that's going to break the cycle in your family. You're going to be mm -hmm. the one that's going to break the cycle with your children, or you're going to be the one to break the cycle somewhere that a cycle needs to be broken. So if you believe in God tonight, you're receiving this, say, I am a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. I am a trailblazer. All right. So, all right. As y'all are doing that, uh, we're, we're going to get into the meat of this. We're going to we meet we're, we're, now. We're really about to get into the meat of this tonight. And so we're going to talk about the crime of Amon. We're going to talk about the crime yes. of Amon. And this is 2 Samuel 3, 12 and 15. This is kind of like the meat of our conversation. Uh, this is this is now we're dealing with David's children. And um, and 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 David has sons. All y'all know about his sons, Amon, uh, Absalom. He has a daughter by the name of Tam, uh, uh, Tamar. Tamar. Mm -hmm. He also has uh, a son by the name of Solomon. And, uh, you know, David has 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 wives, he has concubines, he has children. But this is the backdrop of watching David now win many wars, but also make many mistakes. And yes. uh, and, and one of the one of the mistakes that have been identified and highlighted in the, in the Bible is how David um, um, and depending on who you talk to, many say that David uh, David slept with Bathsheba. Many people believe that it was something more aggressive. 
uh, and it was not just consensual. I'm trying to be nice over here because I don't know who I don't know if there's any young young children on here watching tonight. But but we we must understand that whatever David did and however this this turned about, Bathsheba was not his wife. And uh, to make matters worse, David then not only uh, uh, lays and and has has and, and lays down with Bathsheba, but he also gets her pregnant and then go take it the further. He then has her husband to be killed on the most uh, most aggressive and most violent side of the battle when there was a war going on with Israel and the Philistines. And so and so he's doing all of these things, trying to hide his actions. And God exposes him. He uses Nathan. Nathan comes to him and he exposes his actions. And he says, I have sinned. And, and here is the thing about about David. And here's the conversation that God has with him. He said that I have I have put away your sins. Hear this. David, I put away your sins, but your you but for what you have done, I, I still have to judge it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, we're not trying to get too deep into the into the weeds about this, but I need you to understand that there are certain things that are generational because although God could have wiped you out, God could have God could have done far worse. His heart and his compassion for his people is undeniable. But there are certain things that God is will have to allow to play out simply because he is God. And he has mm -hmm. to allow these things to take place and transpire because if not, then 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 what are the enemies of the of God will say if they will allow these things to happen? So David now getting ready to see what happens when we allow ourselves to fall into sin. Because David it's, opened the door. David opened David the door. opens the door. This is trauma at its foundation. It's when sin opens the door mm -hmm. so the backdrop to this is as we get ready to reach verse 12 is this um when trauma trauma is the wound and out of that wound is born the uh the 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 the, the, the pain the hurt the rejection and watch this and when it's unaddressed it plays out. Mm -hmm. It plays out. It plays out. So in verse 12, it says, No, my brother. This is Ta this is Tamar. No, my brother, she says to him, don't force me. In other words, because of Amon's love, ungodly love for his for his for his sister. He is wanting to do something with her that she does not want to do. So he says, no, my brother, don't force me for such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. What about me? Where could I get rid of my disgrace? And what about you? You will be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Please mm -hmm. speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. But he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he raped her. Mm -hmm. This is her brother. This is her blood. Mm -hmm. Who overpowers her and rapes her. Then Amon hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he loved her. Amon said to her, get up and get out. No, she said to him, sending me away will be greater wrong than what you have already done to me. Woo. That's a lot right there. That's a, That's lot. a whole lot. That's a whole lot. All right, I need everybody to just breathe. I need everybody just to ex to exhale that, because we because like I told you before, when we're dealing with trauma, trauma has to be addressed. And 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 when you're dealing with trauma, you you cannot you cannot go around it. You can't go underneath it. You can't go over it. You must deal with it face to face. So where do we begin? Huh. Where do we begin? Because as we are looking at 2 Samuel tonight, verse thir uh, chapter 13, one of the things that we begin to open up and we begin to realize is, is that 
Everything has a beginning. Yes. Everything has a beginning. Everything that is being played out under the in the house of David and what is happening now with all of the things that are transpiring, it, it did not happen by accident and it, it did not happen randomly. Everything has a beginning. So what I want you to write down is trauma has a wound. Yes, yes, yes. Trauma has a wound. Listen, everyone, I see a couple of, I see the numbers going down just a little bit. Stay with us. Listen, if you're with us, I want you to release those emojis and I want you to say, I'm still here. I know this is heavy, but I, I need to, I, I, but we're going to get free tonight. I know, I know is I know this is tight, but we're gonna get free tonight. If you're with us, if you're still here, say I am here. I am here. Come on, I wanna we we look we 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 wanna we wanna make sure you're good. We wanna make sure you're good, but we wanna help you navigate through some tough some tough things and tough conversations. Yes, yes, yes. Tough yes. conversations. Trauma has a wound. Trauma has a wound. And we just forestated to you that David is the one. The things that are transpiring, as bad as they are, there was a door that was open that will allow this behavior to allow this behavior, watch this, to go forth unchecked. And that's what we said. David opened the door. So we David. must not just focus, right? Is that right, Dr. Deanna? We cannot just focus on Amon. And we yeah. cannot focus on just the on, on on what has just not happened to Tamar. We cannot even focus so much on what Absalom is getting ready to do. We must begin to investigate and try to figure out how did we get here? Because a lot of times we don't want to really deal with the idea of how did we get here? Which which goes back to uh, where we started. The the whole purpose in this is to recognize our trauma, yes. and so the door, like we said, the door opened with with David. But listen to this: you have to be able to go back and say this is what happened, whether it's somebody else's, whether they agree or disagree for you. This is, this is what recognizing your trauma looks like. This is not about recognizing somebody else's trauma. This is your trauma. So in recognizing your trauma, you have to be able to go back and say, this is my experience. And even when you say this is my experience, whether somebody agrees or disagrees, it's your experience and what happened with you and how it happened. And you have to go back to the beginning of that, which, which with, with this situation with David, uh, like Apostle was saying, uh, it's so so crazy because when he was talking about David, he talked about how David had Uriah killed. But look look at the behavior of what happened, why he had Uriah killed. And here is his son doing the same thing he, to he, another he, level. Because at least at least David, David did it with somebody's wife. The son did it with his sister. Come on. And, so and it's, it's a clashing in the generation. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Apostle. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was just, I was just. I mean, we, you, you, you open the door, and 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 having the understanding that sometimes behaviors are acting or or they are acting and playing out, playing out of uh, of uh, circumstances in different seasons because whenever something has happened and now it's being passed down. It's only because it's gone unchecked. That's why, that's like, I, that's why I, when David began to cry out about his own issue, he said, "I was shaped in iniquity, mm -hmm. and in sin did my mother conceive me." So he understood that I was, I was shaped in, I was shaped in in an incident. You know, like, like I was, I was born from a, 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 a an incident that has taken place that have left me traumatized. And it had left me traumatized, but nobody never came to me. You know, they left me in the field. You know, mm -hmm. they never brought me around my other brothers like that. You know, I, 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 my, you know, now their mother is not my mother, right? Uh, all of these things are taking place, and 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 there is no documentation, or nor nor any type of historical uh, aspect of anyone telling us that David even knew his mother. So now you're dealing with growing up 
having to deal with all of the 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 the, the rumors. You gotta you gotta you gotta be the one that is the other child. You gotta deal with all of these things while you're around your family. And that is trauma. And that is trauma. You the other child. I, I wonder if they, you know, I I look, I, I wonder is there anybody who's watching us tonight that, you know, it may not be said directly to you, but but you always felt like or treated like you was the other child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 even with that, with you know, when you were saying what you were saying about David being around his siblings, not being think about where when um when um the priest came to anoint him. Mm. Everybody else was in the house. They didn't even acknowledge that he was there. Come on. It was the wisdom of God on the man of God to say, it's got to be another because I know what God said. Mm -mm -mm. And so he comes in and they're like, oh, it ain't him. <laughs> Imagine you come before your whole family and they said, oh, it ain't him. Tell me that ain't traumatizing. Tell me that doesn't affect your mental. And, and, and so now that we're out here, let me say this. If you know David's story of women, why would a man struggle with women other than the fact that he didn't have a mother? Come on. So Come on. that's trauma in itself. And as it passes down, he has these behavior patterns that have been unaddressed. So now they are passed down to his son, Amon. Amon, love, Amon was in love with his sister. Then when he was finished with his sister, he threw her away. So Amon got that side of his father. He got that part of his father's trauma. Because you know you do you reproduce your trauma if you don't deal with it, right? And it becomes a cycle. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes the cycle is not just passed down um, unbeknownst to the interview. Sometimes it's learned behavior. Because if I grew up in the same house with somebody who's already dealing with their insecurities and their own struggles, and I'm watching them being a polygamous man, not a monogamous man, but it's like I see you with one woman, and then next night I see you with another woman, and you never seem like you're satisfied. You never seem like you're happy. It, it seems like it, it seems like you got to. It's like you're trying to fill a hole that you cannot fill, and you just keep on doing the same thing over and over, hoping that you get a different result. But it's the same result over mm -hmm. and over and over again. And by definition, they call that insanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to write this down. Dysfunction is not by accident. <laughs> I, I, I want y'all to write this down. Dysfunction is not by accident. If y'all haven't figured it out yet, if you don't, if you don't figure out how the enemy has taken trauma and he has taken some of our, 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 our worst moments in our lives and weaponized them, I need you to really hear this conversation tonight. The enemy understands if I can weaponize the things that have happened to you, then I can always keep you disembobulated. And so I want you to write this down. This function is not by accident. Mm -mm, not at all. Mm -mm. And so without addressing the trauma, will find a new address in your children. And so when, when, when David did not deal with this, when David, yes, did David write Psalm 51? He absolutely did. Did he cry out to God? He absolutely did. Did he sit down and talk to his children about some of the things that have happened so that he could give them some wisdom to help them to understand as they begin to grow that they may be able to avoid some of their own things and some of the things that they may have gone through? Absolutely not. Why? Because when you are dealing with your own dysfunction, a lot of times what we will do is, is that we will, we will, we will move past it but we'll never address it. We, we'll, we'll move past it, but we'll never address it. And, so and you that's see your way like this. Yep. Yep. And, and that's what, that's what keeps us stuck is mm -hmm. that and, and a lot of times we know that we've been, that we're dealing with trauma. A lot of times we know that something happened, but we don't know what to do next. Yeah. Because for cycle for a long time, no one else did anything about it. So it's just a part of life. Like, you know, we call it life is life. <laughs> life is life. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's exactly what we call it. And so when we deal with Tamar and we realized that Tamar was, was thrown out 
So now what are we dealing with now? I mean, now, now, now the wound is not only have I have a wound, now the wound is open. Now, I mean, now I'm I'm literally, literally, you are casting me away. Mm-hmm. You're and, casting and, me away. And there's that abandonment. Yep. There's that abandonment that we talked about. David was abandoned. Now his daughter abandoned. Yep. Yep. So David, quickly, everyone. David got caught up. Now his son caught up. Yep. Yep. And so everyone, what, what, so everyone, you know, what happens is we want you to write it down. There's abandonment. When you've been, when, when things have happened to our lives and, and, and people have done things in, in our lives, uh, when, when they are no longer need you, they throw you away. And so that looks like abandonment. Mm -hmm. It looks like abandonment. It looks like neglect. And, 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 and of course we've been talking about generational because we're talking about now dealing with David, we see where aim and now we got this from because it's still an ongoing issue and a struggle that he even having his own father. So trauma can is generational. Trauma can be generational. And listen to this. And here's something that we often don't hear and we often don't talk about is when you are scolded for your dysfunction. I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to act like this. I didn't ask to 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 been done like this. And so when my behavior changes, when I respond in a certain way, I do things in a certain way, and I'm scolded for the things that have happened to me, but I didn't ask for this. I I, I you know what I wonder, I wonder how many of us actually have dealt with dealt with being scolded when people thought that you was acting a certain way, but really it was just you crying out. I I I I I really believe that there's quite a few of you on here who probably have childhood stories to say that people um scolded you. And I'll use that word scolded you, but they only scolded you because they didn't they didn't recognize that you was really crying out. And and that's what trauma it, it, it creates this behavior. We have this behavior that we begin to respond uh in certain ways. One way we respond is we respond because we're looking for attention. Another way we respond is because we want that love and that compassion. But then there's that place of anger. Anger and frustration because I don't know how to move from where I am. I don't know how to um, navigate these emotions and these feelings that I have because of what I've been through. And we do, we have destructive behavior. You deal with, with these walls of somebody say, hey, how you doing? And you, why? <laughs> oh my God, yes, yes, That's yes. That's a trauma. Yes. You are not born naturally mean. I don't, you know, people are like, oh, she just mean. She always been mean. No, what happened? She just, she's just really needy. He's just really needy. He always got to be around a group of people. Something happened. And a lot of times we don't even stop to say, well, why would that happen? Why do they act like that? And most of the time, the people that identify your trauma are people that's been through things similar to what you've been through. And they don't even say anything because they haven't addressed their own trauma. Which is most times what is the biggest thing that we often see is, is that people oftentimes, if they really be honest, they be looking, they, they're looking for answers. And what frustrates people a lot of times when it comes to their own trauma is, is that when they hear people kind of share some things about things that may have happened, they're like, okay, I found somebody that now might be able to help me. But just because you hear them talking about bits and pieces of this story doesn't mean they have fully addressed their own trauma or their own issues or their own situations. Absolutely. We might just have the courage to share with you on a few things or bits and pieces. But that don't necessarily mean that they've actually came to a point to where they have addressed these things themselves. And people who have not addressed anything, they if they haven't helped themselves, they're not going to be in a position to help you either. Mm -mm, not at all. Not at all. And 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 that is one reason why a lot of people say you are too. They tell me I'm too transparent. If, if my story gonna save your life, if what I've been through gonna help you, 
change some direction, make some. I, I just believe that every part of our story, every part of our situations and our lives, um, God, God allowed us to go through these things strategically, Come be on. it good or bad. And it has to work for us. And one way that we make it work is by testifying and sharing with other people so they can overcome. But if you're not, un and, and that is a lot of what happens in families, you know, you can ask a fam an older family member, has this ever happened to you? No. And then you find out years later it did. And it's all because they have not embraced that I really can be free from this. I know seniors that have dealt with um, physical abuse when they were 14 and 15 years old and now 70 and 80 and would not address it. And God can give it to somebody in a dream or in a prophecy and they will still fight against it and eventually give in and say, yes, that happened. But they still don't want to talk about it. And, you know, and I think the power behind that is, is because when you are able to talk about it, you don't know who you may be talking to, or who may be listening to your story that's going to really ca cause them to be set free as well. I believe that everything that we go through is designed, is designed that God may use you to be able to bring him glory, but to also bring freedom to other people. Yes. You inside of you and the very thing that may have happened to you as you are going through this process God is letting you be in process for a very good purpose. And that is, and that is to tell your story that other people may be free. And so, and so, and so, um, I want you to go into the comment section and say restored, just simply put restored. Uh, and if you are following this, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to read Psalm 51, Dr. Deanna, but, uh, you know, I, we, we already kind of went over about broken hearts, unintentional, you know, talking about some of the things like unintentional and what's intentional, spiritual, you know, and we talked about your fault, but I, what I want to talk about is, is that when you get the courage, when you get the courage to tell your story, Ooh. Ooh. come on, y'all, I come on, y'all been with us this Ooh. time, we, we out here now, when I want you, I want you to breathe that in, that God is giving me courage to tell my story. And so when David, when David writes Psalm 51, he said, restore to me the joy mm -hmm. of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will Ooh. teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Oh, my God. I got to say that again. He said, restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves, then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, thou my mouth, my praise to you. You do not desire sacrifice, I will offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You will not reject a broken and repented heart. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And so, and so, and so with dealing with trauma, everybody tonight is understanding and knowing that, man, some of the most worst things in our lives have happened. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, there are things that many of us, if we had time to share, they will be stories that will bring tears to people's eyes. Matter of fact, they'll bring tears to your own eyes of just even re remembering it. But it will also bring tears to other people. But I'm telling you tonight that when God gives you the courage to open up and begin to share your story, the Lord says that he said, I will wipe every tear from their yes. eyes. I'm telling you that when you begin to share your story, there are people you do not know. There are people that you have not met yet. There are encounters and there are appointments that God has already ordained. That when God says, when you take and take and receive the courage I'm giving you, he said that there will be so many people that will be blessed by your story. I, I give you one and you know, Dr. Dan, you could jump right back on to this, but I give you the story when Jesus 
when Jesus, uh, when they bring, G they bring to Jesus the woman who was caught in adultery. Yeah. And oftentimes, all we ever talk about is that she got caught in the act. But no one never really talks about how traumatizing it is where you have been forced into a lifestyle that you did not ask for. You are you are putting your body on a day to day basis to be 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 used, abused, mutilated, whatever the case may be, being broken down to nothing, not even being identified, barely as even a human being. And then on top of that, you've been they you've been caught. They they say caught in an act, but you got people watching you like you some kind yeah. of entertainment. We out here now. I mean, we might as well talk about the trauma, the drama, the trauma of traumatization. That 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 how 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 some of us did not even ask for this. We did not we did not ask for this. We did not we did not we did not put it in nobody's DM. We did not message nobody about the trauma that many of us have endured. And now on top of that, you got people that want to judge your trauma. My God, say that again. Do you got people who want to judge your trauma? And watch this. When you got people who want to judge your trauma, not only they want to judge your trauma, they want to act like that the stuff that's happening to you is your fault. Mm-hmm. 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 And 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 even in that, let me say this. Mm -hmm. Um, there is not a time frame, and no one can tell you how long you're supposed to feel what you're supposed to feel. God can heal the wound and he will heal it if you allow him. Come on. But don't allow anybody to tell you, you need to stop talking about that. You need to stop talking about that. You need to stop talking about that. I'm a talker. That's what I do. Anybody that know me, if you don't want you don't want to talk, don't come around me because I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna ask you a million questions. I'm gonna tell you a million stories. But listen to this. This is what I've learned. When you talk about it, you get free. And when you have a safe place to talk, it gives you the opportunity to release everything that's attached to it. Because when trauma comes up and you deal with your trauma, you need to feel what you felt. You can't stay there, but you need to feel it so that you can address it. Yeah. Uh, uh, people that deal with, uh, have dealt with domestic violence and all that, that kind of stuff and, 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 and physical abuse. And they say, I'm okay. It's over. No. It's not, not over. Mm -mm. You have to deal with those things. That's going back to even Tamar. Um, when Am when uh, Amon did what he did to her, they threw her away. Yeah, They put her away. And they thought, and listen, let me say this to us. Because we think it's the right thing to do don't mean it's the right thing to do. When they put her away, they stopped everything that was that could have been in her life. It, her, it put her in a place of isolation. It put her in a place of abandonment. So when you deal with those feelings, when you didn't do anything, something bad and traumatic happened to you, you deal with, what did I do to deserve this? You deal with, it so, must be something wrong with me. You deal with, uh, who's ever going to love me? Who cares? Imagine they put her away. She was a young woman. So because she experienced that violation, doesn't mean that her life ended. Come what on. made her life end is that they put her away. Had somebody talked to her or said some things, she could have got up and lived a thriving life. Do you know that trauma will stop your destiny? You still got destiny in you in spite of what happened to you. And, and, and what we do is we just repeat it and we, we talk about it and we talk about it. It's one thing to identify it, but you got to get up and build from the trauma. And how do, so how do I build from the trauma? You take your, you take your pain and give it purpose. Imagine I'm speaking on my own behalf. Imagine the trauma of grief, man. And from 2017 to now I've had so much, a uh, loss. I mean, the loss of loved ones and family members and all of that. And I'm like, God, I, I don't even know how I'm still standing. But God has allowed that thing to open a door of communication to help other people deal with trauma. I wasn't trying to go in that direction. I mean, deal with grief. That is not the direction that I was trying to go in. Because hmm. I wasn't sure if I had processed my own stuff. 
but you have to be able to say, this is not my final destination. This is not the place that I'm going to stop at. I know this happened to me, but I got to get up from here. I got to get me some help. I got to know that there's purpose in this. I, I say this and people laugh, but this is, this is what trauma looks like. And this is how you respond to it. I say this, it says all, the Bible says all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. And every time I say this, people laugh. If I stomp my toe, it's got to work for me. And they're like, what that mean? If I stomp my big toe, which I have done three years in a row, I've broken my toe. And I say this, if I stomp my toe, it's got to work for me. How's it going to work for you, Dr. Deanna? My nail polish might get knocked off. And God is sending somebody to say, let me, get, let me give you a pedicure. I got a free pedicure. It worked for me. My, 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 my toe was broke and I had to go travel. Let me, let me get you a wheelchair. And they up me up to first class. It's got to work for me. I don't care what the situation is, no matter how big or how small. If you trust God and you lean into God and allow him to take those wounds and make you whole, it will work for you. Some of the stuff that we've gone through, if people, if we would deal with our stuff, we could have a thriving business. We could have a thriving Hollywood movie that'll save somebody else's life, but we too ashamed to tell the story. We're too afraid of, of saying, uh, uh, I'm going to get past this. Uh, we're too ashamed. And me and Apostle talked about this earlier. Uh, when you are the one that breaks the cycle, breaks the pattern, you're the trailblazer. Everybody has lived in the in the in the cycle of poverty, and, and grandma lived in in the projects, and auntie lived in the projects, and mama. And so I decided that I don't want to live in the projects. I'm gonna move across the street. I just broke the cycle. But guess what happens to put us in a more traumatic place? Everybody starts talking about us because oh, you think you all that? Oh, you, no, I don't think I'm all that. I just think I want to do better. That's good. So trauma is that. The ones that you think you helping and you moving forward, they begin to ridicule you. That's what trauma looks like. And then you isolate yourself. And then you wonder, did I do something wrong because I did something different? This, this is what that cycle looks like in family. We make the same, we do the same thing because that's what everybody else did. Nobody else had a business, so I'm not going to have a business. Nobody. Listen, let me tell you something. We, we grew up in a church. Oh, my God. Help me, Lord. We grew up in a church, and everybody did the same thing. Went to the same church for 40 years. Grandma built a brick, put the first brick down on the church. And then auntie came, and she put the pews in the church. And then the next generation came and built a new pulpit. And then the next generation sung in the choir and led all the songs. And the church is not the church for you. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. You stay. And don't walk in what God has called for you to walk in. Don't become the 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 whatever that God, ministry leader that God calls you to be. Because this is what I know. And they said, and I only know one person that left this church, and they treated them so bad. That's traumatic all by itself. I've been in the church all my life. I done seen it. But you got to be able to trust God that He can heal. And deliver and set free, even though you breaking a cycle. Because if you stay, all that generation before you operated in this, but the one move you made shifted the whole next next generation of the family and brought them into another place in God. But trauma will make us stay put out of judge because of judgment, because of fear, all of those things. I don't know that uh, um, that um, David was fearful. I just know that he was away from everybody else. But guess what? That door that he opened of abandonment happened for his son, led to his daughter. We didn't even touch Absalom. I mean, my God. Yeah, that's like a that's like a whole nother like a whole nother se session. Yeah, a series of trauma. You know. Yeah, yeah. And because I, I can say this about Absalom that I thought about today, Absalom. So as we kind of speak the story, Absalom is the son that avenged his sister and killed his brother. But listen to this, and then David sent them away, 
And when he went away, he was away. And then, then when he, even when he came back, he wasn't allowed to come in the presence of his father. Am I right, Apostle? That's right. And, and listen to this. But listen to what I'm about to tell you. He didn't have compassion on his son, but he had compassion on Saul's grandson. grandson. Yep. Listen to that. How traumatizing. You didn't have compassion on me as your son, but I watched you have compassion on the grandson of a man that tried to kill you. That opens the door to trauma of resentment, bitterness, and, 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 and Absalom even tried to kill his father. Hatred. That's what trauma does when you don't address it. And you know what? And and when you mentioned that also, and then you know what? We're gonna we we we'll 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 leave. I'll leave it with this, and then open it for some questions for the last few minutes. When you when you say about when you talked about how he he did not show the same compassion for to Absalom if he did for for um, Saul's grandson Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. I couldn't think of his name. Yeah, Mephibosheth. Here's the thing, though, because. Looking at Epsilon reminds me of my shortcoming. That's good. That's good. Looking at my children reminds me of my shortcomings. Versus looking, I would treat my enemy's children better than I treat my own. Woo, that's good. Listen, I want y'all to write this down. Then we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give y'all a chance to ask some questions before we leave tonight. I want you to write down the right poor means something. I, I want you to imagine if what if what if David, what if David would have turned and went into Absalom's home and grabbed and took his daughter and said, you know what? This is on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is on me. This is I, I this is because of things that I have done. I, I don't want you to be broken. I'm talking to somebody tonight who can break a cycle in their own bloodline. That sometimes God. you got to turn and you got to go and say, this is on me. This, is, this, this happened because of the things that I have done. And, and, I, and I have to openly speak about it so that it won't happen to somebody else. But I come to, I come to, watch, I come to restore you tonight. I, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to throw you away. I'm not going to make you feel like a reject or feel like a leopard. I'm coming to you to let you know I come to restore you. As a father, I come to restore you. When Jesus, hear me, the right, the, when the, the right poor, the right poor can restore. Hear me? Yes. The, the right poor. The the, the 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 right the right vessel who pours into your life can restore you when you have gone through trauma. When Jesus asked asked the asked the woman who was caught in adultery, he said, "Where are your where are your your accusers?" They said, "There are none." He said, "Neither will I will accuse you." He said, "Sin no more." And later on, we find her at the feet of Jesus. Why? Because when you have come out of a traumatic situation, you need to be in an environment that's going to be a safe place. So that you can be able to watch this to be able to re to be restored without judgment. That's good. That's very good. Restored without judgment. Because listen to this. Just because when you start coming out of the trauma, don't mean that people's opinions are going to change about you overnight. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's why the right poor does matter. Because with the environment is going to be a judge-free zone. I, I'm trying to heal. I, I don't. You don't need to be in an environment that won't allow you to heal. That's good. That's very good. Amen. Amen. Listen, everybody. This is called. This is. This is um, trauma. When trauma comes to the door. We've been talking about all evening the subject matter about um, about trauma, its origins, its its implications. But how, but tonight we want you to know that you can be restored, you can be free, you can be restored. Whatever has happened to you, it has happened to you. Can we acknowledge that? Mm -hmm. It has happened, but it don't mean that you have to continue to carry it. It has happened, but it does not mean you have to continue to carry it. There is there is life. After Trump, Trump, yes, absolutely. So, so listen, everybody, we're we're listen, we're we're getting ready to close. Hey, let me ask y'all before we jump into these questions tonight. 
How many of you have been blessed by this? Come on, we want to hear from you this afternoon. How many of you have been blessed by this? Go into the comment section and let us know really quickly. Release those emojis right now. This is the Church of the Living God Midweek Online Bible Study. Tonight is my, my special guest is my daughter, Dr. Deanna Morris, the apostle, Madam Apostle, leader, visionary <laughs> of TMRVA in Richmond, Virginia. I'm so excited. I was so thankful to God she joined me tonight, helped me to tag team this subject matter. But how many of you have been really been blessed by this tonight? Come on, we want to hear from you. Yes, there is life after trauma. There is life after trauma. You do not have to live with trauma all your life till you get to the grave. You can have freedom right now. Jesus yes, said yes, that yes. you may have life and have it more, more. abundantly. abundantly. More yes. abundantly. So, you know what? There was a question. There was a question. And y'all have a chance. We got a few minutes. We're going to take a few minutes, everybody, to, to answer some of your questions tonight. Listen. <laughs> Because we really believe in freedom. We believe in this subject matter that you do not have to continue to live in fear. Uh, God said, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read some of the, I'm going to read a question I see on here, Dr. D. And okay. uh, I'm going to let you take a swing at it. It's uh, Prophet, <laughs> Prophet Ken. <laughs> it's Prophet Ken, uh, obviously. Um there's a relation there. <laughs> but he has a question tonight. He has a question. He said, please help me with this trauma. How do transition back? How do transition back into the real world when I have been taught the doctrine of separation my whole life? Sometimes I feel like I've missed out on the best parts of life because of this doctrine. I tell him in private. I'm just joking. <laughs> Prophet kid is my brother. But seriously, it is um and and I can be really honest about that because we came from the same place. You have to be able to trust God and not the doctrine of men. Does it line up with the word of God? I don't see anywhere where God tells us. I mean, there are a couple of places that he, that Jesus tells us to separate ourselves from certain people, but it was because of characteristics and different things that they were doing. It wasn't because, like, like this is the one that gets me. Whew, I know y'all going to throw the, throw the whole laptop away when I say this. Just because they're not saved don't mean that you're not supposed to be around them. And it don't mean that you're the one that's supposed to save them. And a lot of times we separate ourselves from family members. I know when I first got saved, I was taught, I, we grew up, Prophet Ken is my brother. If they're not saved, you don't need to hang around them. And I lost a lot of friendships in the beginning because of that. And I had to go back and fix that. Because it was like, what we were taught was, what does good have to do with evil? Mm -hmm. Well, how are people going to get Jesus if they're not around nobody that, that know Jesus? And you ain't got to preach to them every day. So what that's going to require is for you to hear God in the relationships that you have. And that means that some things you got to go back and fix. It was a doctrine. It was not the word of God. And we have to be able to separate the two uh, in knowing how to uh, navigate that. You got to be able to know when it's a doctrine and when it's the word of God. And when you realize it, the one way that people embrace you back is that you come back and just tell the truth. Hey, I messed up. I, I messed up. I, I, I thought that I had to do it this way. Now, I'm not talking about situations where you know you're not strong enough to be in that environment. Yeah, it does take time to maneuver in that. But just cutting people off and because of what we've been told. And, and, and there's nothing to it at this point but to build new relationships, build lasting relationships, fix what's broken and move from there. And don't hold yourself in condemnation. Because what keeps you stuck is the fact that you're fearful of what their response is going to be. But let me say this. Um, when you go back, to fix it, you got to grant grace for them to be able to embrace you. Don't just think they're going to say, oh, I'm sorry, and they're going to say, okay. It don't work like that with people. They have to be able to trust the relationship, understand that there's no secret motive and all of those things. So I hope that that uh, brought a little bit of clarity to that. 
and you know what? And I will say too also that in some cases when you go back and you begin to address certain things because the way some of us were really taught was is just separate yourself. It, it you know the Bible says come from amongst them, but but that's dealing with that's dealing with with folk, with people who are dealing they're, they're they're acting in a certain behavior. But when right. you're dealing, you are addressing certain things. You just separate because obviously you're not you're 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 not confronting it. You just separate yourself from it. One of the things that we have to realize also too when you deal with trauma is that it's not necessarily so that when you go and you begin to address these things that they're even going to even identify or acknowledge what you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I mean, because this, it's a real thing that it, it takes courage to go and confront, but it also takes a, a bit of wisdom to understand that they may not even acknowledge it or they may be in denial about it because of the pain. Because oftentimes, a lot of, most times, nine times out of 10, people know what they've done. Mm-hmm. Nine times mm-hmm. out of 10, they know what they've done. Now, do they want to really address it? Do they want to respond it? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the power of confrontation or, or addressing the thing is, is that when you have released it, you have released it, then you take back control. Mm-hmm. You take back control. And so even if they don't apologize, even if they don't, they don't reconcile with you, you reconcile in yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's so important to understand that even when you address, never think that it's going to be a mutual thing. Sometimes dealing with something is the fact of the matter is, is that it's really giving you a healing. It's really dealing with your own healing, necessarily not always having to be a mutual one. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Listen, everyone, again, this is Church of the Living God Midweek Online Bible Study. Again, this is Apostle Thomas and Tonight, I have Apostle Deanna Morris with me. Uh, and let me tell y'all something. The, one of the reasons why I believe God laid it on my heart, uh, not just because she's an amazing, you know, an amazing leader, uh, but there's, there is, there is, there is a, uh, there are, there are, there is, what's the word I'm looking for? She has, she has, she has much behind her to really reference yeah. and to be able to establish and help to, you know, uh, affirm certain the things that we're talking about tonight. Not only is she an amazing leader, but she's also a certified coach, certified uh, counselor. She is a she has a doctorate. Listen, I thank God for for her because we need them in the body of Christ. Listen, in these days and times, you need people who are certified. I'm gonna say that again. In these days and times, there are certain things that that we need to navigate through. We need people who have been trained in these areas. We need, I say amen all by myself. We need people that are trained in these areas. And so I thank and praise God for, for people like, like you, Apostle Deanna, because, you know, we need more and more people like that. Um, and amen. so before we go, everyone, does anyone ever have any questions? Again, was this good, everybody? Was this good? I, I hope this was good. I hope this is really helpful for many of you tonight. Hope you were blessed. Um. And again, if you do have any questions, even if you don't share with them tonight, you can always inbox us, message us, and we will uh, read them. We will pray and we will get back with you. So, so. yeah, absolutely. So if there's nothing else, let me just again, just want to celebrate everybody. I celebrate God tonight and I thank God for all of you who have tuned in. Uh, I'm looking at the comments and you guys are really, really, uh, can you see the comments? I mean, they are really Mm -hmm. like, Yes, <laughs> they. Yeah, it was really good, extremely good message. Awesome, praise God. We are so we're so thankful to God. We're glad y'all got something out of it. Again, this series is called "Growing in Our Healing," and uh, tonight we just hope that you have grown a little bit more. Uh, I want to take out the time to thank again, uh, Apostle Deanna. Thank you so much for jumping on here tonight. Um, you know, I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to our team, our VA family for supporting your apostle, your leader. Thank you for coming on here and be such a good support. Church of the Living God, thank you so much for being on here tonight and inviting all of you, inviting people to be a part of this amazing conversation. And so with nothing else, everyone, um, I want to go ahead and thank everybody again. Um, remember, everybody, our Bible studies are every Wednesday at 7 p.m. want to remind mm-hmm. everybody of uh, that you know this sunday coming up hey we're coming to the very end of our upside down sir uh up down upside down church 
Well, we've been upside talking about down. the worshiper. Oh yeah, we've been upside down. We 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 preach first, and then we give God praise and glory for the rest of service, and it's been been amazing. And so, uh, I want to invite everybody who have not been out. Uh, you've been online. Come on out. The experience is so different when you come to the house of God. So that's Church of the Living God, um, one zero zero nine Hudson Street, Bryan, Texas. And uh, we are online and we are on site, 11 a.m. Come out, be a part of what we are doing. Uh, God is definitely in the place. And so with nothing else to say or nothing else to add to, we will, We want to say grace, more grace, and more grace for your life. Be blessed, everybody, and have an amazing evening.